Welcome to Chapter 8, Patterns of Inheritance. In this chapter, I'm going to go over Mendel's experiments, the laws of inheritance, and extensions of the laws of inheritance. Introduction. Genetics is the study of heredity. Johann Gregor Mendel set the framework for genetics long before chromosomes or genes had been identified at a time when meiosis was not well understood. Mendel selected a simple biological system and conducted methodical quantitative analyses using large sample sizes. Because of Mendel's work, the fundamental principles of heredity were revealed. We now know that genes carried on chromosomes are the basic functional unit of heredity with the ability to be replicated, expressed, or mutated. Today, the postulates put forth by Mendel form the basis of classical or Mendelian genetics. Not all genes are transmitted from parent to offspring according to Mendelian genetics, but Mendel's experiments serve as an excellent starting point for thinking about inheritance. Section 1, Mendel's Experiments. By the end of this section, you will be able to explain the scientific reasons for the success of Mendel's experimental work, describe the expected outcomes of monohybrid crosses involving dominant and recessive alleles. Johann Gregor Mendel, 1822 to 1884, was a lifelong learner, teacher, scientist, and man of faith. As a young adult, he joined the Augustinian Abbey of St. Thomas in Brno in what is now the Czech Republic. Supported by the monastery, he taught physics, botany, and natural science courses at the secondary and university levels. In 1856, he began a decade-long research pursuit involving inheritance patterns in honeybees and plants, ultimately settling on pea plants as his primary model system, a system with convenient characteristics that is used to study a specific biological phenomenon to gain understanding to be applied to other systems. In 1865, Mendel presented the results of his experiments with nearly 30,000 pea plants to the local Natural History Society. He demonstrated that traits are transmitted faithfully from parent to offspring in specific patterns. In 1866, he published his work, Experiments in Plant Hybridization, in the Proceedings of the Natural History Society of Brune. Mendel's work went virtually unnoticed by the scientific community, which incorrectly believed that the process of inheritance involved a blending of parental traits that produced an intermediate physical appearance in offspring. This hypothetical process appeared to be correct because of what we now know as continuous variation. Continuous variation is the range of small differences we see among individuals in a characteristic like a human height. It does appear that offspring are a blend of their parents' traits when we look at characteristics that exhibit continuous variation. Mendel worked instead with traits that showed discontinuous variation. Discontinuous variation is a variation seen among individuals when each individual shows one of two, or very few, easily distinguishable traits, such as violet or white flowers. Mendel's choice of these kinds of traits allowed him to see experimentally that the traits were not blended in the offspring as would have been expected at the time, but that they were inherited as distinct traits. In 1868, Mendel became abbot of the monastery and exchanged his scientific pursuits for his pastoral duties. He was not recognized for his extraordinary scientific contributions during his lifetime. In fact, it was not until 1900 that his work was rediscovered, reproduced, and revitalized by scientists on the brink of discovering the chromosomal basis of heredity. Mendel's Crosses Mendel's seminal work was accomplished using the garden pea, Pisum sativum, to study inheritance. This species naturally self-fertilizes, meaning that pollen encounters ova within the same flower. The flower petals remain sealed tightly until pollination is completed to prevent the pollination of other plants. The result is highly inbred or true breeding pea plants. These are plants that always produce offspring that look like the parent. By experimenting with true breeding pea plants, Mendel avoided the appearance of unexpected traits in offspring that might occur if the plants were not true breeding. The garden pea also grows to maturity within one season, meaning that several generations could be evaluated over a relatively short time. Finally, 
large quantities of garden peas could be cultivated simultaneously, allowing Mendel to conclude that his results did not come about simply by chance. Mendel performed hybridizations, which involve mating two true breeding individuals that have different traits. In the pea, which is naturally self-pollinating, this is done by manually transferring pollen from the anther of a mature pea plant of one variety to the stigma of a separate mature pea plant of the second variety. Plants used in the first generation crosses were called pea, or parental generation, plants. Mendel collected the seeds produced by the pea for parental plants that resulted from each cross and grew them the following season. These offspring were called the F1, or the first filial, filial being daughter or son, generation. Once Mendel examined the characteristics in the F1 generation of plants, he allowed them to self-fertilize naturally. He then collected and grew the seeds from the F1 plants to produce the F2, or second filial generation. Mendel's experiments extended beyond the F2 generation to the F3 generation, F4 generation, and so on, but it was the ratio of characteristics in the P, F1, and F2 generations that were the most intriguing and became the basis of Mendel's postulates. Garden pea characteristics revealed the basics of heredity. In his 1865 publication, Mendel reported the results of his crosses involving seven different characteristics, each with two contrasting traits. A trait is defined as a variation in the physical appearance of a heritable characteristic. The characteristics included plant height, seed texture, seed color, flower color, pea pod size, pea pod color, and flower position. For the characteristic of flower color, for example, the two contrasting traits were white versus violet. To fully examine each characteristic, Mendel generated large numbers of F1 and F2 plants and reported the results from thousands of F2 plants. What result did Mendel find in his crosses for flower color? First, Mendel confirmed that he was using plants that bred true for white or violet flower color. Irrespective of the number of generations that Mendel examined, all self-crossed offspring of parents with white flowers had white flowers. All self-crossed offspring of parents with violet flowers had violet flowers. In addition, Mendel confirmed that, other than flower color, pea plants were physically identical. This was an important check to make sure that the two varieties of pea plants only differed with respect to one trait, flower color. Once these validations were complete, Mendel applied the pollen from a plant with violet flowers to the stigma of a plant with white flowers. After gathering and sowing the seeds that resulted from this cross, Mendel found that 100% of the F1 hybrid generation had violet flowers. Conventional wisdom at the time would have predicted the hybrid flowers to be pale violet or for hybrid plants to have equal numbers of white and violet flowers. In other words, the contrasting parental traits were expected to blend in the offspring. Instead, Mendel's results demonstrated that the white flower trait had completely disappeared in the F1 generation. Importantly, Mendel did not stop his experimentation there. He allowed the F1 plants to self-fertilize and found that 705 plants in the F2 generation had violet flowers and 222 had white flowers. This was a ratio of 3.15 violet flowers to one white flower, or approximately 3 to 1. When Mendel transferred pollen from a plant with violet flowers to the stigma of a plant with white flowers and vice versa, he obtained approximately the same ratio irrespective of which plant, male or female, contributed to which trait. This is called a reciprocal cross. A paired cross in which the respective traits of the male and female in one cross become the respective traits of the female and male in the other cross. For the other six characteristics that Mendel examined, the F1 and F2 generations behaved in the same way that they behaved for flower color. One of the two traits would disappear completely from the F1 generation, only to reappear in the F2 generation at a ratio of roughly 3 to 1. Upon compiling his results for many thousands of plants, Mendel concluded that the characteristics could be divided into expressed and latent traits. He called these dominant and recessive traits respectively. Dominant traits are those that are inherited unchanged in a hybridization. Recessive traits become latent or disappear in the offspring of a hybridization. The recessive trait does, however, reappear in the progeny of the hybrid offspring. An example of a dominant trait 
is the violet colored flower trait. For this same characteristic flower color, white colored flowers are a recessive trait. The fact that the recessive trait reappeared in the F2 generation meant that the traits remained separate and were not blended in the plants of the F1 generation. Mendel proposed that this was because the plants possessed two copies of the trait for the flower color characteristic and that each parent transmitted one of their two copies to their offspring where they came together. Moreover, the physical observation of a dominant trait could mean that the genetic composition of the organism included two dominant versions of the characteristic or that it included one dominant and one recessive version. Conversely, the observation of a recessive trait meant that the organism lacked any dominant versions of this characteristic. And that brings us to the end of section one. Join me next time for section two, laws of inheritance.